This is every vital thing that God wants everyone to know in less than 10 minutes. There's so many things that God wants us to know. He's given us a book. However, everything that he wants us to know, it's going to take some time to go through those things. But I want to cover the most important things that everyone needs to know. Everything that God wants people to know. Number one is this. You're not that good. You're not that great. You're not that awesome. I know you've been taught that. I know ever since you were a little kid, you were told that you were the prettiest, the strongest, the smartest. But the fact of the matter is you are not that good. As a matter of fact, you are no good. Isaiah 646 tells us that for all of us have become like one who is unclean and all of our righteous deeds are like filthy garments and all of us wither like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. Nothing good about us. As a matter of fact, we are like dirt. We are worth $5 worth of dirt. And that's with good inflation. That's on a good day. The only value that we have in us, that is, if we are saved, is the spirit of God in us. Jeremiah tells us that the heart, our heart, your heart and mine, is desperately wicked. It's deceitful above all else and is desperately sick. Some versions say wicked. Doesn't really matter. Not a good thing. Our heart is horrible. How do we know? Well, we've got a lifetime to look back and see all the things that no one made us do, we did on our own. And even we hate those things. Why? Because we've got a bad heart. We love sinning so much, even if we know it's going to hurt us in the end. And what does the Bible say about sin? Well, you're going to get paid for it. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God, that is from Jesus Christ, is eternal life. So that leads to the next thing. God is not like us. We're no good. God is good. Here's rule number one. There's one God who is sovereign. That's God. Rule number two, we are not. The Bible tells us in Psalm 135, 6 that God, he does whatever he pleases. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and in earth, in the seas and all the deep. He does what he pleases, not us. There is one God who is sovereign. Above all else, God is sovereign. What does that mean? That means he can do what he wants to do, when he wants to, to whomever he wants to, just because he wants to. Why? Because he's God. You don't know anyone like him but God. Now, compare that to us. As a matter of fact, Paul goes down a little list of certain sins that people commit. He says that some people are idolaters, fornicators, they're adulterers, effeminate, homosexuals. These are people that will not inherit the kingdom of God. He says, nor will thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor swindlers, they will, none of them will inherit the kingdom of God. But what does he say? Such were some of you, but you were washed. That's the next point that we want to get to, that one, you're no good. Two, God is the only one who is good. And three, he is the only one that can make you saved, that can bring you salvation. Remember, he says that he is the Lord. He does what he pleases, and he chose us to be in him. Why? According to his good pleasure. Well, it doesn't make sense to some people. It doesn't have to. Why? Because you're not God. He is. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, he says that, and you, you and I were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you were, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the air, of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. That is our former father, the devil. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and in the mind, and were by nature children of wrath even as the rest. That's how we live. As a matter of fact, that's what we also enjoyed. And the Bible says that we were raised up in him. Now, we didn't have anything to do about it. He did so. We were raised up in him. Verse 7 says, so that he might show the surpassing riches of his greatness or his grace in the kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And notice what he says, for by grace you have been saved through faith that not of yourself. It is the gift of God in this word. It is is in the neuter, which refers back to one, the salvation and the faith. Both of those are a gift of God, a gift from God. You could not do it yourself. If you could, you would have, but you can't. And let's be honest, the reason why most of us think we can merit our own salvation goes back to the first thing we said. We're no good and we simply don't know it. We think that we're better than what we really are. But what does the Bible says? Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing good. Nothing, no matter how hard you try, apart from him, you can do nothing. And so before we finish, let's recap some of the most important things or the most important things that God wants us to know. One, you're no good. Two, only God is good. Three, you can be saved only through him by placing your faith in him. 
And so to summarize all of this up, let's go back to Jude, verse 24. And look what he says, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, only he can keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory. He will do exactly what he is able to do. Remember, he does what he pleases. And to our only God and our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority or power before all time and now and forever. Amen. That's what God wants you to know. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Are those three things the most important things that God wants you to know? Well, wait a second. There is one more thing that is missing. We would be wrong if we don't make sure that we know this, the one thing that God wants you to know. What is it? The last thing, who God is. The Bible says the Lord is God. In Deuteronomy 4.35, he says, to you it was shown that you might know that the Lord is he is God. There is no other besides him. As a matter of fact, to reiterate it, Moses says in verse 39, he says, know therefore today and take into your heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and on earth below. There is no other God. He's God on earth. He's God in heaven. The Lord is. Well, how does Moses make a bold statement? He doesn't know. How would he know? Well, because God is the one who is telling him that. Then in Exodus chapter three, verse two, he says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire. And then in verse four, he says, the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called him. So the Bible says the angel of the Lord, the Lord God, all synonymous. And what does he ask for his name? What's the word that's giving the name that's given? He says, I am. That's the word that's giving either in the first person from God's standpoint or from the third person, he is called I am. That's important, isn't it? Isaiah even recounts in Isaiah 42, 8, he says, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will give my glory to no other, nor praise to graven images. So in other words, God is not going to allow anyone to have any praise over him, nor his glory to be shared. He says, I am the Lord, that is my name. Why is that important? The Bible says that in the beginning in John 1 was the word, the word with God and the word was God. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory that the word who is Jesus is God, was God, will forevermore be God. That's who he is. Jesus also himself says that in verse 24 of chapter eight, he says, therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. And the word for I am he is the Greek word for I am, ego ma. And so remember what he said to Moses, he says, I am. And what Paul says is this, he says that you must confess. Chapter 10, verse 9 of Romans says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus as Lord, there's only one Lord, you shall be saved. What does he say also? He says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You must recognize that Jesus is the Lord. The Lord is God. That's why Paul tells Titus in Titus 2.13, he says, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory, the glory, the one that he will share with no one else, of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we call Jesus Christ our great God and Savior. Why is this important? Why is this one of the more important things you need to know? Because unlike every other religion, we have to do things, serve, to become something special, to overcome things, to please our God. No, we have to, instead of dying for God, our God literally comes and takes on human form and dies for us. We don't have to show our love for him first. He shows his love for us first. Then we love him. That makes him different than any other imaginary God there is. And so the most important things that we have to know are that one, you are no good. Two, God is good. He alone is good. As a matter of fact, he alone is God. Three, your salvation cannot be done by you at all. There's nothing that you can do. He makes the steps. He does it. He grants you the faith and grants you the salvation. Why? Because number four, he alone is God. Jesus, who is the Lord, is God. That's how much he loved us. Those are the most important things that God wants you to know. Are there more things that are important? Sure, absolutely. But if you get these four things, then you will know what God wants to know and everything else falls in line underneath there. Misunderstanding these four things will cause a lot of difficulty and you cannot be saved otherwise.